Hello everyone. In this session, I will start another topic that is primary structure of dicot root. The primary structure of dicot root shows mainly three zones. How many zones? Three zones. They are number one, epidermis. Outermost zone is epidermis, and second zone is called cortex. Second one is cortex and third zone is called vascular bundles or steel third one is steel these three zones are seen in the transverse section of primary root primary dicot root coming to first one epidermis epidermis this is epidermis you can observe the diagram in this diagram the outermost layer of the root is called epidermis this all layer is epidermis epidermis composed of single row of cells single row of cells that means uniseriate and the cells are rectangular in shape this is a rectangular cell and cells are closely arranged without intercellular spaces that means gaps are absent between the cells and these cells are living cells all the cells are living cells outside the cells there is no cuticle they are not cutinized in the roots epidermal cells are not cutinized that means cuticle is cutinized cuticle is absent over the epidermis next some of the epidermal cells uh, produce some tubular structures these tubular structures are called root heads root heads they are the outgrowths of some epidermal cells they are called root heads the cells which produce in root heads are called trichoblasts trichoblast these trichoblast cells producing root hairs due to the presence of these root hairs epidermal tissue is also called epiblema epiblema and it is also known as piliferous layer piliferous layer and epidermis is also called rhizodermis rhizodermis these all names are Uh, given for the epidermis due to the presence of root hairs this epidermis absorb water and mineral salts from the soil that absorbs capillary water and the transport that water to the cortex along with that this epidermis gives protection to the inner tissues this is about first zone of primary uh, structure of dicot root coming to second one cortex cortex is the next zone which, which is present below the epidermis this cortex is again differentiated into three zones again it is differentiated into three zones first one is exodermis exodermis and second zone is called general cortex general cortex and third zone is called endodermis endodermis these three zones are seen in the general cortex coming to first one exodermis this area is called exodermis that means it exodermis is present below the epidermis this is exodermis exodermis present below the epidermis which is composed of two or more rows that means two to three rows of cells are present in the exodermis cells are closely arranged and they contain thick walled cells thick walled subarised cells are present thick walled subarised cells are present in the exodermis and this exodermis gives protection to the inner tissues when the epidermis is damaged are removed this exodermis 
is helpful in giving protection to the inner pores along with that this exodermis prevents the loss of water from cortex to the outer environment okay next coming to general cortex general cortex this general cortex is present below the exodermis this all is general cortex general cortex this general cortex composed of thin walled cells all are thin walled cells thin walled next they are parenchymatous cells parenchymatous and living cells all the cells are living cells once again i am repeating general cortex composed of thin walled cells these all are thin walled cells and uh, parenchymatous cells they are living cells and intercellular spaces are present these are the intercellular spaces are you understand and these general cortical cells composed of leucoplast they have leucoplast leucoplast so that they are useful in storage of food materials general cortical cells useful in storage of food materials along with that these general cortical cells uh, involved in the transportation of water from epidermis to stem epidermis to stem this is about general cortex next coming to third one third zone or third part in the cortex that is endodermis endodermis this area is called endodermis 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 composed of a single row of cells single row of cells and innermost layer it is innermost layer of cortex in the cortex endodermis is the innermost layer which is composed of single row of cells they are rectangular cells their radial and transverse walls are deposited with suberin and those are also called casparian thickenings casparian thickenings otherwise they are also called casparian bands thickenings casparian bands or casparian thickenings because of uh, uh, these casparian bands are discovered by caspary so that they are named as casparian thickenings or casparian bands they prevent the loss of water from steel to outer cortical cells are you understand next uh, these casparian thickenings are absent they are absent the cells which are opposite to protoxylum elements these cells are called passage cells passage cells are transfusion cells transfusion cells are you understand some of the endodermal cells do not have casparian thickenings which are opposite to the protoxylum elements in the steel such cells are called passage cells or transfusion cells they are useful in the transportation of water from cortex to protoxylum elements they are involved in the conduction of water are you understand next third zone of internal structure of root is steel coming to steel this steel is also composed of four types of tissues they are number 1 pericycle pericycle and second zone second tissue is called vascular bundles vascular bundles and third tissue is called conjunctive tissue conjunctive tissue and fourth type of tissue is called medulla these all tissues are present in the steel okay in that first one pericycle this is called pericycle 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 is the outermost layer of the steel it is outermost layer of the steel 
and single row of cells are present in the pericycle that is uniseriate generally they are um, parenchymatous in nature pericycle cells are parenchymatous in nature they are rectangular in shape these cells are rectangular in shape they are parenchymatous in nature and these pericycle cells produce lateral roots they produce lateral roots are you understand next during secondary growth this pericycle produces secondary cambium secondary cambium this secondary cambium helpful in the production of secondary tissues this is the function of pericycle next coming to vascular bundles vascular bundles are here radial vascular bundles radial or separate vascular bundles separate vascular bundles that means xylem and phloem bundles xylem and phloem are alternating with one another they are not present on the same radius they are not present on the same radius they are alternating with one another this is phloem this is phloem and this phloem is alternating with xylem bundles xylem bundles are you understand and the xylem is exarch i am writing here the xylem is exarch that means protoxylem elements are directing towards the pericycle these are the protoxylem elements proto xylem elements they are directing towards the pericycle and the meta xylem elements are directing towards the medulla they are these are meta xylem elements they are uh, present towards the medulla or pith generally in dicot roots four xylem bundles are alternating with four phloem bundles but their number ranges from 1 to 8 i am writing here the vascular bundle numbers that means xylem phloem bundle numbers ranges ranges 1 to 8 1 to 8 if the single xylem bundle and single phloem bundle is present that type of xylem is called monarch xylem single bundle single bundle if the single bundle is present that is called monarch xylem monarch xylem if the two xylem bundles are present then it is called diarch xylem diarch xylem if the three bundles are present it is called triarch xylem triarch xylem in this diagram four xylem bundles are present they are alternating with the phloem so that it is called tetrarch xylem tetrarch xylem if the five are present it is called pentarch xylem if six are present hexarch if eight are present they are called octarch xylem like that xylem bundles ranges from 1 to 8 are you understand next coming to conjunctive tissue conjunctive tissue the ground tissue which is extending between xylem and phloem this is xylem and this is phloem in between the xylem and phloem there is ground tissue this ground tissue is called conjunctive tissue it is ground tissue present between xylem and phloem which is known as conjunctive tissue this conjunctive tissue uh, generally parenchymatous it is generally parenchymatous sometimes it may be sclerenchymatous this tissue is useful in storage of food materials and it is also involved in secondary growth during secondary growth this conjunctive tissue along with pericycle produces cambium secondary cambium thus that secondary cambium producing secondary xylem and secondary phloem are you understand next last one medulla medulla is the central part that is central part of the dicot root is called medulla which composed of thin walled parenchymatous cells it is composed thin walled parenchymatous cells generally uh, these metaxylem elements are closing from all sides that means 
this metal one, this one, this one, this one, these all are extending into the center that occupies the medulla. Sometimes in some dicot roots, this medulla may be absent because of the extending metaxylem elements. They occupy the medulla so that medulla is absent, otherwise, it may be small. Medulla is small or absent. And uh, if the medulla is present, this medulla is useful for the storage of food materials. This is about uh, internal structure of primary dicot root. In the next class, I will come with another topic that is primary structure of monocot root. Thank you.